Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Talks Tales. Today I have a creepy horror recommendations list for you guys. It's going to be focusing on winter reads. So um, all the books in here center around winter time. I think they would be great to read this time of year. Um, just because I think, you know, there's there can be something very creepy about the snow and ice and darkness. So I definitely recommend all of these reads. It's been really blustery here in western Washington. The rain is just coming down right now. There's sideways wind. It's in the upper 30s. It's kind of miserable out, so I would rather have a bunch of snow right now, um, but it rarely snows here, and it's a shame because I actually love the snow. Um, when I was a little kid, one of my favorite times of the year was when it would be snowing when I lived in Utah because I lived there for a few years and just there's something really neat about it. Um, and I think that winter horror is pretty strong because it just adds to that sort of survival or spooky factor to it because, you know, especially if you have imagery of like blood on snow, it's very cool. So let's get started. First book I have to recommend is The Terror by Dan Simmons. This is, I think, a classic um, winter horror read. Um, I've read a couple other books by Dan Simmons. Hyperion is a favorite of mine. This one I think is his second strongest book that I've read because I think he can be a little bit of an uneven author, but this one was very solid. I'll read back to you really quick. The men on board the HMS Terror, part of the ill-fated 1845 Franklin Expedition, are entering a second summer in the Arctic Circle without a thaw, stranded in a nightmarish landscape of ice and desolation. Endlessly cold, they struggle to survive with poisonous rations and a dwindling coal supply. But the real energy, uh, sorry, the real enemy is even more terrifying. There's something out there in the frigid darkness, an unseen predator stalking their ship, a monstrous terror clawing to get in. So this one, very solid. Um, it's a big book, but it's totally worth it. I think that the um, Arctic atmosphere really adds to what's going on in this book where um, essentially they are being stalked by a monstrous creature, but they're also, um, there's a lot of helplessness and hopelessness and it's just they're stuck. They cannot go anywhere. Their ships were iced in, um, so that's playing a role. And then there's these two ship captains, and then their crew, and just following what's going on. Um, it's you know, it just sucks you in, and you just want to know what happens, who survives, what's going to go on. Um, and the author did a really good job researching this because um, the two ships that are in this are are based off of real ships that disappeared in the Arctic, um, which I thought was very cool. And I did check out the TV show. Um, I saw the first two episodes and enjoyed them. They definitely make changes from the book, um, but it's still pretty good. But my curse with TV shows is I rarely actually complete a show. So we'll see. I want to try it at some point, but I don't know. So this is my first recommendation. Go check it out, especially if you enjoy, um, you know, myths, monsters, survival fiction, and historical fiction. This will be a good one. All right, next one is by my boy Ronald Melfi, and that is Snow. This one I could have also put on my Christmas um, horror recommendations list because this does take place kind of around Christmas time, um, but I think this works on this list as well because it, you know, the snow itself ends up almost being like a character in this book. Um, so I'm going to read that back to you really quick. When a brutal snowstorm shut down all the flights in and out of Chicago, Todd Curry and a few other stranded passengers rented a jeep to drive the rest of the way to their destinations. But along a forested, isolated road, they picked up a disoriented man wandering through the snow. His car wouldn't start and his daughter had vanished. Strangest of all were the mysterious lashes cut into the back of the man's coat, straight down to the flesh. When they arrived in the nearest town, it seemed deserted. Cars sat in the streets with their doors open. Fires burned unattended. But Todd and the rest of the travelers will soon learn the town is far from deserted, for they're being watched and hunted. Soon they will discover the inhuman horrors that await them in the snow. So this one is very, very enjoyable. It's not one of Ronald Melfi's best, but it's still a great wintertime read. Um, I would say, I don't want to give too much away, but if you enjoyed Stephen King's The Mist, you will like this book. Um, it's definitely creepy and the the setting itself is very strong um the characters you know they're they're okay um but this is you know just kind of one of those reads where you know you just plow through it and 
see what's going on and where it takes you and um it definitely starts to like really reel really you in and it does become a survival horror which i do enjoy a lot because um, i like just regular survival fiction and i like horror so when you combine together i think it's extra awesome um and definitely you know the cover it's not great but it blood on snow that's what you need to know going into this book basically so definitely check this one out but the other book i'm going to show you by ronald malfi this one is the more solid of the two and that is his book bone white this one is fantastic i on my 2019 top books i forgot about this book because i read it earlier in the year i completely left off the list but this was a five out of five star read for me so i don't know what i was doing um this is a wonderful wonderful winter horror read i'm gonna read it back to you really quick and talk a little bit more about it paul gallo saw the report on the news a mass murderer leading police to his victim's grave in remote Dreads Hand, Alaska. It's not even a town, more like the bad memory of a town. The same bit of wilderness where his twin brother went missing a year ago. As the bodies are exhumed, Paul travels to Alaska to get closure and put his grave to rest. But the mystery is only beginning. What Paul finds are superstitious locals who talk of the devil stealing souls, and a line of wooden crosses to keep what's in the woods from coming out. He finds no closure because no one can explain exactly what happened to Danny. And the more he searches for answers, the more he finds himself becoming part of the mystery. Yeah, this was really, really good. Um, the sense of place is very strong, and you can just really picture this tiny little town in the middle of nowhere, Alaska. Um, and the cold, and the snow, and the winter, and the isolation plays a very strong role in this book. Um, Paul's a, a solid main character. You, you know, you really root for him. He's one of those guys, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Hopper from Stranger Things a little bit, where he's like, I'm just going to keep on going and, you know, put myself into these situations because I have to solve this mystery and have to, you know, figure out what's going on. <laughs> so I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, but it's, yeah, this one of the two Ronald Wolfe books on this list, this is definitely the far stronger, more compelling book and better written and everything and the characters are good. And I really enjoy the mythology behind this. There's folklore and it's just very solid and well done and um you know like it it ends like you know it's a standalone book but i could explore sort of what is going on in this book more um but it's definitely creepy like there are just some moments where it's like oh that was just very eerie and like that scene was just you know give you chills which is excellent so definitely recommend bone white ronald malfi next one i would say this is not really a horror novel but it's creepy and it definitely emphasizes the ghost story and that is thin air by michelle paver ghost story this copy has some sparkles and the little snowflakes which i think is neat um this one it's historical fiction um takes place in the 1930s um about it's following these hikers who are trying to climb um one of you know i think it i don't know if it's Everest, but it's like one of the big mountains. Um, I'll read the back for you really quick. Kang Chen Junga. I apologize for that. <laughs> the sacred mountain, biggest killer of them all. Five Englishmen set out to conquer it, but the courage can only take them so far, and the higher they climb, the darker it gets. Yeah, that's right. It is um, Everest. And this book is very short. Um, it's super easy to fly through. It's only, you know, it's less than 300 pages, and the writing is very big, but it's survival fiction with the ghost story element, which I thought was really neat, kind of combining the two, and it's sort of, you know, subtle in a way, and a lot of it really does fall onto these hikers, you know, climbers, finding themselves in this awful situation and trying to survive the elements and weird stuff is going on, so um, it's definitely good. She has another book out called Dark Matter that I've been wanting to check out that also has to do with something similar, so I'm excited to look into that because I enjoyed this book. But again, it's not, of, of the books on here, this is probably one of the least horror-like books, but it's it's still fun and enjoyable and will give you some, you know, a creep here or there, but it's still one de well done and well researched. Next up, I'm not going to talk too much about this because it's very familiar and it's on a lot of winter horror recommendations list, and that's Misery by Stephen King. Um, I also recommend the movie, and I'm going to be doing a 
you know, just short little movie recommendations um, list coming up. Um, but basically, I think a lot of people know the story of Misery. There's, you know, Paul Sheldon. He's this famous writer who writes women, well, not women's, but I mean just like romance novels, and he finishes his last book, and he's driving down the mountain, ends up getting into a car wreck, and he's rescued by his number one fan, and then things escalate from there, um, and there's definitely, you know, element of being isolated, and the winter weather just kind of crouching and coming in, and, you know, people aren't really going to be able to look for him during a snowstorm and he's just stuck there at the mercy of this just crazy fan of his so um you know i definitely recommend this it's a good winter horror read next one is also by our boy stephen king and that is the shining this one um I definitely recommend, even if you've seen the movie and you don't want to read the book, definitely recommend reading the book because the movie and the book are very, you know, they're different. Um, in fact, for me, the movie is very solid at its own, but I think I appreciate the story that's the actual book more. Um, I think Jack is a more sympathetic character. Um, in fact, I could do an entire video comparing and contrasting the two, which I probably will at some point. Um, but I think. A lot of people know the story about this one as well. The Torrance family ends up um, going to the Overlook Hotel because Jack's going to be the caregiver, or, you know, sorry, caretaker there. And he's trying to finish writing his play that he's been working on for a long time. And then things just start to go wrong. There's something up with this place. Um, and it goes from there. And of course, the winter weather really plays a strong role because they are completely isolated. They're cut off from help. Um, they're stuck at the mercy of what's going on at the Overlook. Um, is it real? Is it not? Um, so there's definitely a very strong amount of snow and ice and winter um, encroaching in on the story. So I definitely recommend reading this this time of year. It's a good winter read. Um, or the opposite. Sometimes I like to read winter reads in summer if it's really hot and you want to cool down. So, um, But this is a very solid book, so check it out. Alright, I only have a couple more. This one I read in high school when it came out. This I read this like my sophomore year of high school, so I've um, been a fan of this book for years, which is why there may be a little bit of a nostalgic factor by including this on this list. Uh, but that's Bone Chiller by Graham McNamee. And this one was, you know, fast paced read. This is one of two YA books. Well, actually, no, there's one YA book, which is this one, and one middle grade book that's coming up um, on this list. And this one was really cool. It has a lot of um, Native American mythology to it, and it takes place in Canada. Um, I'll read the back to you really quick. In this frozen wasteland, something is hunting them down. Danny is sick of running. Harvest Cove is the latest nowhere place he's drifted through with his dad. In summer, people come to stay in cottages on the vast lake. In winter, Harvest Cove is a ghost town hidden away in Canada's big empty. Danny's been running forever, but Harvest Cove might be his last stop. The place has a way of making people disappear. As the cold sets in, the town turns to ice. Danny and his new friends stumble on Sentry's old nightmare. They start seeing things, impossible things. But in winter, there is no escape from Harvest Cove. Yeah, this was really, I flew through this, um, this was a recommendation from my librarian way back when in high school. Um, I loved it. Um, I've read it a couple times since then, but it's been a while since I've done another reread. Um, but it's just very creepy, and it has friends, you know, like, focuses on friendship, um, and grief, because the main character's mother had passed away, so that kind of plays a role in it. Um, and the, the, cr the, the thing that is making people disappear is very unique, like the design of it, the way it acts and everything I just thought was really neat and unique and different from um, a lot of stuff I'd read and even this kind of type of book felt a little bit different than some of your typical YA fare that I was reading at the time where a lot of it was like the paranormal romance and this is just focusing really on it being horror and creepy and mysterious and all that stuff so um, if you're looking for a YA book that's really easy to read that's kind of creepy um, set in the winter, like, winter is really prominent in this, like, there are times where I just felt very cold reading it, and that's what I love, is when you're reading a book and then it ultimately kind of makes you start feeling, like, really feeling it. So I definitely recommend checking this out for your winter reads. Alright, I have two more. This one, 
is Dead Mountain, the untold true story of the Dyatlov Pass incident. This one, um, so I have a big interest in the Dyatlov um, Pass incident. I've always thought it's very creepy. Basically, there were nine hikers that, dis you know, that didn't come home, and they were found dead, and it looked like they had self-defense wounds, and there was one that had some radiation on him. It was just bizarre um, and very creepy. Here, I'll move the inside flap really quick. In February 1959, a group of nine experienced hikers in the Russian Ural Mountains died mysteriously on an elevation known as Dead Mountain. Eerie aspects of the incident, unexplained injuries, signs the hikers cut open and fled their tent without proper clothing or shoes, a strange final photograph taken by one of them, and radiation readings on some of their clothes have led to de decades of speculation over what really happened. And then this pretty much just follows that, and it's very well done, um, very enjoyable. I, I flew through this and would read it again, and I you know, typically don't tend to read a whole lot of nonfiction, but this is kind of the, top, the type of nonfiction that I would read, so definitely check that out. And then the last one is sort of an honorable mention, um, just because I adored this novel as a kid. So if you have a kid or, you know, you enjoy reading books for kids um, or just want a super, like, a book that you can sit down and read in an hour, that is The House on Hackman's Hill by Joan Lowry Nixon. This was my favorite book in like fourth and fifth grade. I used to read it constantly over and over and over again. It may very well be my most well, like, most read book in existence because it was short and I just kept obsessively reading it. Um, I'm gonna read the back really quick. Everyone told them to stay away. Jeff and Debbie know why. They can hear it breathing, see its shape in the darkness. It was as tall as a man with the body of a man, but its head was that of a jackal. Anubis, ancient Egyptian god and guardian of the dead. He was silent, still waiting, until they came. Now he moves to the ruined homes of Hackman's mansion looking for revenge, looking for them. So this isn't necessarily, the reason why it's an honorable mention is it's not necessarily a winter horror read per se, but it, the story takes place in the winter time. Um, and like the fact that they go to this place and it's snowy out and everything, um, I felt like added to the creepiness, especially as a kid. Um, and I would read it a lot when I lived in Houston, Texas, because I lived there for a couple of years, and it was always very hot, so I would read this book and just be like, oh, I miss the snow, I wish it was wintry, and everything, so, um, this has a lot of Egyptian mythology, it was, again, just a lot of fun, and there's creepiness, and there's a hidden treasure, and there's, you know, it, it's just a very, very well done, creepy, um, kids book, so check it out if you're interested in maybe exploring kids books. All right, so those are my winter horror recommendations, winter creepy recommendations. Um, you know, let me know if you've read any of these books, and if you did, what did you think of them? And if you have any winter recommendations that didn't end up on this list, um, let me know because I'm in the mood to read some more winter-esque books. Um, they can be thrillers or any genre, really, but, you know, I t do typically tend to like the, you know, creepiness and spookiness of of the horror genre. So anyway, thank you so much. Um, you guys have a great day. Happy reading. Please like, comment, rate, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.